Between all the topics related with AI and its accelerated evolution, we see how new models are appearing, models focused on maintaining the same capabilities by reducing costs, models that offer new possibilities by solving difficult problems with greater reasoning ability or generating, for example, images with greater accuracy. We see how there are different applications or tools using these models to solve problems in a rather interesting way, or how, for example, they reach the general public, either, for example, with iPhones by Apple or on PCs by Microsoft, etc. Luckily, we have the ability and access to most of these models to be able to develop our own applications or tools, and that's what I did recently. And today I'm going to talk about an extension, a Visual Studio Test extension that I created and offers different tools and possibilities to improve the development cycle when you are creating mobile applications with .NET MAUI. So, for example, you have the possibility to directly create application icons by giving a text, a prompt, or create Emacs for your applications. Or you can give a design or, for example, a sketch and generate the code, the shaml code, from this image. That's interesting, and of course, we have more options or possibilities related with the test, refactoring the test, for example, give me the comments of uh, this piece of code, or explain this piece of code, or give me any good, uh, you know, refactoring ideas with good practice, performance, etc. So, without more, let's go for it. So let's start by saying what possibilities this extension offers to speed up and improve the workflow when creating .NET MAUI applications. I have already opened Visual Studio with the extension installed. To use the extension, use download the VSIX. It's available on GitHub, for example, in the release section. Just download it, double click, install, and once it's installed, we have to make the configuration. The extension is completely free and open source, although it uses service from Azure OpenAI, which of course have a cost. It's important that you take this into account. You can find the price for this service in the Azure OpenAI price section. And the main model issues in this case are GPT-4, where you can see the cost price for every thousand input and output tokens here. I'm currently updating the wiki of the project. It's in progress, but uh, I really want to include some uh, query costs, uh, how many queries you can release to, for example, refactor or comment the code and case like that. I think it will be something more intuitive than making calculations using, you know, the, the table from Azure, but it's here, you can use it. Once the extension is installed, go to tools, options and then we can go to .NET MAUI AI Assistant. We have here the entry set of configuration parameters. The main parameter will be the API endpoint along with the API key. There are three main models to use. The basic models will be the chat model deployment name. This model is used to do all the refactoring, commenting and all the basic operations. And then uh, we have other two models. For example, in the previous case, I usually use GPT-4 and the other two models are the completions model deployment name. In this case, this model is used, for example, to convert and generate code, code from uh, designs or drawings. Uh, you can use models like Pision here. And the final model is the match model deployment name. I typically use DALI 3 to, for example, generate icons, image, etc. Are all the models needed? No. If you want to use, use the tool to, for example, comment, completions, or get suggestions about the code, you need to fill the fears of the models. Don't need to create, for example, a DALI 3 model, except if you want to generate, for example, icons. So, Let's start by taking a look at the functionality of the extension. In any section, class, or code, we have a contextual menu. So let's select a piece of code, click here, and we will have a new menu entry included by the library, which will be the .NET MAUI AI Assistant menu. This menu offers a number of options. For example, explain the code, well, we will have a dialog that will show us, will explain what the code that we have selected does. 
comment in the code, then use what it indicates, we'll get the selected code and automatically comment it. Making code suggestion will be a refactoring of the code, always thinking about aspects such as performance, etc. Then we have some experimental options like create a new ideas. It's a still work in progress, but for example, if you select um, right click in a page, for example, feature page, we'll use this code, or in case you are using a, a code behind, we'll go to the channel code to use that code and generate some UI taste based on the UI. Then we have uh, more experimental options, like for example, convert code from Xamarin Forms. These options will do things like, for example, if you are converting the code from a control and in your control you are using bind bubble properties, using, for example, a color type, the default value for the color in Xamarin Forms was color default, while in .NET MAUI the default value is null in this case. So this kind of conversions and uh, refactorings will, will, will happen using this option. And then there are some specific, you know, a custom command option that will allow you to, for example, go to the tools options and settings and introduce any query that you want to do. For example, let's say that you don't want to comment the code, you want to get the summary header of a method, you can, you know, write a prompt requesting that you want to write the, the header in this case. So let's just start taking a look to a bit of the functionality, starting by explaining the code. So we wait a little bit and the result it's appear with a prompt. This code defines a method called git Maui that is responsible for configurating Maui applications. We'll be explaining it step by step. The first method creates a static method that returns an instance for the Maui application. We create a builder, the builder creates an instance using the create builder static method, etc. etc. Then we go to the methods that configure font and well, as you can see, all the logic that we have selected is explained step by step. We can also right click again, go to our NetMaui Assistant app and comment the code. And yeah, we are adding some specific comments for each of the lines. We have a conditional option to add login support. We have uh, options to manage what happens in the back, etc., etc. So let me reselect the code to refactor the code. Right click, NetMaui AI Assistant, Suggestions. This will be a refactoring of the code. In this case, created for me a new method called Configure Font, which received the collection of fonts and has split it into two options, in two methods. And we have directly uh, before all the code directly in the create method, uh, create Maui method. So that's okay. Then we have more tools available within the tools menu, .NET MAUI Assistant, we have three new tools. Uh, an icon builder, at its name implied, it's an icon generator. If you want to create, the, for example, the, the application icon or icons for the application, this is an option that will be directly uh, interesting, you know, will we'll, we'll re request a prompt, you write a prompt for the icon and will automatically generate uh, some specific icons related with that. Then we have something similar with the image creator, which allows us to create image using uh, AI. And one really, really interesting option is the design to code option that uh, what, what we'll do is select an image, for example, a design or can be a hand raised drawing, and it will automatically generate a shell code to define the user interface based on the design. We will try that later, but for example, let's start by the icon builder. We have the, the tool here. As we said before, it's expect to, to write a prompt. It's important to keep the prompt as simple as possible. And yeah, it's, it's interesting to include some nouns and some adjectives. So let's write something to generate a restaurant icon, for example, with a stroke border and with the white background. For example. Okay, so let's start generating. The generated icons will start to appear directly here. Oh, 
Okay, we created four icons and once we select an icon, we have directly the exactly prompt test that has been used to generate this icon and we have a button to download it. Once we press, for example, the, the button to download it, we have a, you know, a folder, picker to use, save, whatever we want the icon. Something similar uh, we have with the image creator. We can create image, for example, a futuristic city. Okay. Um, at night, for example. Just like before, it start working and will generate multiple samples of what we have indicated. And well, once it's done, we have all the pictures. We can just select any of the match. We have the exactly same download button that we have seen before, and we can just save the match in any folder. And finally, we have the design to code option. As we already mentioned it, we need to select an image to convert it to uh, code. So let's select, for example, the design. It's a design based on a restaurant app. You show, showing, you know, Pixar, the price, the description, etc. etc. So let's go to Visual Studio, pick the picture. Okay, once it's selected, it starts working. And once it finishes, it will indicate where we want to save the generated code. So we can set the file, for example, test.shaml here. And yeah, the code has been generated successfully. Now we can go to the generated code. Let's take a look. This is the code generated. So we are going to use copy it and paste it in our main page. Also, it's interesting to see that we have here a pixel match and this piece of match, if we introduce, you know, the, the match model, it can use, in this case, use DALI3 to generate an image based on the description that we get with Vision before. So let's copy the code, go to the main page, where we already have a channel code that we are going to remove. Just paste the generated one. And I'm going to remove this piece of code in the code behind to avoid any exception. This button already not exists. And as we can see the code is functional. We are compiling the application and let's wait to, to get it launched. Okay, good. So we have some basic structure following mostly what we already had before. We have the pixel image, we have, you know, the detail, the exactly same test that we already have in the design. With a very similar layout, we have some fails in the layout here at the, at the end. It's a little bit different, but definitely we have a good base to start, you know, evolving and improving our application. It's better than start from scratch to see something very uh, interesting very quickly. So this is mostly all the options that we already have in the extension. I'm thinking in more possibilities like, like use AI to translate test from resource files, for example, to other language and more options. If you have any idea, any feedback, use, let me know. Please let your feedback in the comments of the entry. I uh, remember also the, that uh, this, this extension already used the user Azure uh, OpenAI, you know, service have a price, so check the price. I'm thinking about other models, other possibilities, but for now, it's currently using Azure OpenAI. So let's take a look on how it works. To do that, let's go to the comment code, for example. We have a system inside that at the end is the prompt that we are going to use to generate the code. And the common behavior use allow us to decide if we are going to replace, insert, or for example, display a, a prompt. So once we are here, all the commands use a base command. 
that uh, generate the Azure OpenAI client and use the chat client to generate the code. In the case of the image, it's pretty similar, but we create uh, an image client. And again, we pass the prompt, capture the result, and yeah, we just use, use, use it as a result. In the design to code, we use, um, you know, the vision APIs, and in this case, we have a good prompt, and again, use the Azure client, then we create the chat client, and just attach as information, all the instructions, and, you know, the design. That's really, really the important part. And, well, we generate code, parse the code a little bit, and sanitize it to, to use you directly in our applications without problems. So I see this is a fun project with a lot of options to, you know, play with all the latest models and testing everything related with all these AI models. I think that mostly everyone have uh, some kind of functionality to extend and improve, you know, the, the cycle of development of .NET MAUI applications. But as I said before, the repository, it, uh, it's here, it's open source, just use the feedback create issues, create uh, any requests, and leave your feedback to know what do you want. This is the repo, uh, github.com, Suarez Ruiz, Maui AI Assistant. All your feedback is welcome. Please join me if you are interested in uh, this extension.